It's been a few months since I did my last FL Studio tips video, I'll leave that linked in the description if anybody wants some more simple or advanced tips, but there's a few little tips and tricks I've picked up along the way that I'd like to share with you guys, so let's just keep this video nice and quick and dive straight in. These are going to be focused on the playlist, the mixer, and the browser, and they're all in the description uh, in case I'm going a little bit too fast. So the first one is looking at the audio on the playlist, and this is something that I just figured out a few weeks ago, and it's actually really really handy so you'll be used to seeing audio in this sort of mono format but if you double click so that's a double left click and then you right click in here you can choose spectrum view or multi-channel waveform view and if you choose multi-channel it splits it into the two channels so nothing's going to sound any different whatsoever but it lets you see the left and the right channels of the audio. Not only does this look really cool, but it actually gives you some really important information about the waveform. To give an example of where this helps, if I'm in my drum bus and I focus in on this tambourine, I can see that all of it's over on the right hand side and there's not actually much left signal at all. And it's the opposite for this cabasa uh, shaker, which is all over on the right and not on the left at all. The next tip is focused on quickly naming a clip, coloring it and sending it to the mixer in as few steps as possible. So if you have a clip on the playlist, you can just right click over here to name it, then give it a color. Once it has a color, if you right click and go auto name clip, it will color the loop and name it in the same time. And then if you click on it and then on the playlist, all you do is find an empty insert, press control and L, it will name this insert the same as the clip up here, it will color it the same and it will all be tied together. This next tip is aimed at saving you some CPU power. If you have a MIDI clip on the playlist, you can just click over here into the picker panel and if you don't have the picker panel enabled, it's in the playlist options and then picker panel. So you can right click, select quick render as audio clip and then if you click on the playlist, your MIDI pattern will be replaced by an audio clip. So you could mute this pattern uh, or you could uh, simply remove the generator in the first place. Of course, you'll want to uh, organize your project and make sure that you send this to wherever your bass was being sent to. The next tip is a little bit of navigation around the playlist. So sometimes you get into a bit of a mess when you're all close up to the playlist like this. If you press control and right click, it will zoom you out of your project. And then if you press control and you right click and drag, you can just zoom back into a specific part of your project. So if I just want to focus in on the drums, I can just zoom in on the drums like that. Another tip with this one is that if you press control and you use the scroll wheel on your mouse, you zoom in horizontally like that. And this is how you see me moving in and out so quickly in the tutorials and I'm not jumping to these top scroll bars, which are great, but they can be a little bit clumsy. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the mixer. So the first uh, technique that I wanted to show was how to uh, move effects on the effect slots here because I've seen a few people saying that you need to click here and then press U or D to move it up or down, but it's so much more simple than that. If you're just hovering over this gray area and you just use the scroll wheel of your mouse, you can just move them up and down really, really easily just like that. Along with this, I just wanted to show that it was super easy to duplicate any of these effects. So if you just click down here and go save preset as you can actually click and drag and then drop this preset into the effect slot like that but not only that if you want to drag onto a different pattern so in this case I'm going to add this EQ to uh, this orange channel here if I go over to the orange channel it's also been added onto there as well that one really saves a lot of time if you have maybe like several vocal channels and you want to have a very similar EQ for all of them. Instead of like saving a preset and recalling it, you can just drag and drop the EQ onto each of the channels. The next tip is something that people have seen me doing in tutorials and have been asking how, how you actually do it and it's to move the inserts on the mixer uh, sideways. So the drum loop that we created earlier, it's not with the drum bus over here, but if I want to move it over there, the easiest and quickest way to do it is just to hold down shift shift whilst you're sort of anywhere on this uh, anywhere in the top here and then you just use the scroll wheel of your mouse to move it side to side and then you can just move it in and out like that if you want to do it even quicker with a bit more control you can change the mixer view from extra large to compact and then once you've changed it to compact mode you can see more easily uh, where you're sending it to I suppose. And also changing the mixer view is something I showed in the last tips video I think but just here on the top you can change it from compact or wide, different modes and also extra large so this is why my mixer looks uh, large like this. 
The next tip is focused on the browser. So you might have noticed that if you're searching for through the browser, you can spend an awful lot of time trying to find a sample that you're looking for. If you use the smart find option up here and say I'm searching for a tambourine, so I'm just gonna press tam. If I press enter, it takes me to the first tambourine sample, but that's only one of them. So how do you actually get to the next sample that it might have searched for? And uh, the key is with the two buttons, F2 and F3. So if you press F3, it will jump you to the next tambourine uh, sample you have. If you press F3 again, it will keep taking you to the to the next uh, of sort of searched term, I suppose. So you press F3 to go to the next term or F2 to go back. So if you were wanting to audition kick samples, you could just keep pressing F3 until you hear one that you like. Or if you uh, liked one in the past, you could press F2 to go back to it. I'm also just gonna throw in two little bonus tips here. So up in tools, and macros. These are uh, two options that save you an awful lot of uh, processing power. The first one is to purge unused audio clips. So if there was samples in your project that you were using, maybe auditioning and trying out, but, you didn't, but you're not using them anymore, if you press this button, anything that isn't being used on the playlist or sent to a mixer track will be deleted from your project. So this is what I do when maybe we're, we, me and Brad have uh, tried out like 15 different snare samples or something, and they're all just sitting there in the chat strip if you press that button it will get rid of them which will save up a lot of RAM on your computer and then the next option is switch smart disable for all plugins a lot of the time uh, my CPU meter is going a bit crazy and that's because I'm sort of recording the screen and everything at the same time as these uh, tutorials but if I press switch smart disable for all plugins it will sort of shut down the ones that are not currently being used and it just saves up a lot of power for the rest of the project so hopefully some of those tips helped you out. It's been a while since I did one of these videos, but the last one I did is just linked in the description and right here in case you wanna see loads more FL Studio tips and tricks. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.